Thank you for joining and tuning in to the Walk in Truth Bible Study. Today we are in the book of Galatians chapter 2, verses 1 through 19. Sit back and enjoy another exciting lesson from pastor, teacher Dr. James Sutton. Gracious Heavenly Father, I just thank you today. I thank you for your word. I thank you for this time that we can spend together studying your word. Bless us and open up our eyes and our hearts to the what the word of God says today. As we study Galatians and their uh, dilemma of Judaizers coming in behind them and what we can glean off of that as a church and be uh, uh, waiting or be prepared for those to come in behind to give us something other than the pure gospel. Lord, protect our ears and our hearts and our minds. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 All right. So, last week we were in chapters one and two, and we're still in chapter two. Uh, we're t- we were talking about Paul. Uh, in chapters one and two, he's proving his apostleship. We have to remember Paul was apostle called out of season. He wasn't like Peter, James, and John, and then walk with Jesus What he did was have a Damascus Road experience with Jesus. And then we talked about in Acts 15, where he, after three years in Arabia, in the wilderness, being taught by Jesus, then another 14 years, then another 17 years, 14 years uh, teaching away from them because they were scared of him. He came back with Barnabas and he did get an audience with the apostles, brother, brother James, Peter and John. And they discussed his ministry and he explained how the ministry had been given the the signs of the apostles, people getting healed, raising from the dead and so forth, that he was supposed to go to the Gentiles as the scripture had indicated in in the Old Testament. And that his ministry was to the Gentiles and the Jews, while Peter's ministry was to the Jews and the Gentiles. We know that he had he he convinced them. And Barnabas vouched for him. And then he received the right hand of fellowship and they agreed. Then we have the scene where he's making these churches in these Gentile areas. And in Galatia, they were a certain type of people, more like us. It's like the the, the church at Corinth and the church in Galatia. If you combine them together, you got the churches in America. But Galatia people were really important. Very easy to impress. They like new stuff. They wanted. They wanted to be first. They they were uh, people that were easily swayed. They were unruly people. They were excitable people, caught up in sensationalism of the moment. Something like what we are in church sometimes. As people, just as people, we get caught up into the new thing that's coming along and believe that it's the best thing and that it's going to last forever. But as we have gotten older, those of us who've gotten older, we know that what goes around comes around and what comes around goes back around. So there's nothing new under the sun. It's just new to you because you're living in this area. OK, that's why when we say stuff like it's harder for when a new generation say it's harder for us than it is for was y'all. Well, you didn't know what it's like to live in our generation. You can't even compare it. You in the generation God wanted you to be in. So whatever the hardness is, you can't compare it to when we when we came through. Because when we came through, we thought that was hard. Amen. But we can't even claim it as a nostalgia. Like it was better then. Because we're 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 limited to our to our experiences, but there's always somebody who might say it was worse then. So we have to look at this in a mature way. And again, everybody's in their time. We're in this time. We're experiencing what we experience. And we need to not be swayed. So Paul is, is dealing with the fact that everywhere he goes, there's somebody that comes behind him and wants to not give them the gospel of grace, wants to give the gospel of works. They're called Judaizers. It's grace plus works, grace plus following the law, grace plus following the ceremony. They never denied Jesus and his resurrection, but they're telling people, well, Paul told you that, but you know what? Hold on, hold on, hold on. There's a little bit more you need to be for so you can be saved now. We're not talking about sanctified. They're saying there's an addition that you need to do before you get saved. And a lot of times in 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 our Christendom in the West, it's weird because they preach grace and, and law at the same time. So do you do or is it already done? You're always wrestling with that. You know, one of the ways you wrestle with that is in tithes. No matter how many times you read it, you still got this thing in your head. But again, if you understood the system of the tithes, it was more about 
an agricultural society storing up stuff to feed the priest. It wasn't about money. And then when it was money, when they gave their offering in money, you have to remember this. Not only did you have to bring the offering that was that was livestock and grain, you had to pay your tithes with some of the money that you had. And it was more of a regressive tax, meaning that I didn't gave my money and my food. So we have to. So we have to. I hear you. So we have to. So we have to understand this was a continuing thing. You never got done with the top plus the temple tax. You know, you had all of that going on at the same time. So, so we have to consider Paul preaching grace to this Gentile unbelieving people. And you have to remember, everybody in the Bible didn't know about Moses. Okay, you think it did, oh, everybody knew about Moses. No, this is, think about Moses was almost 700 years be, after this time. Everybody didn't know about the Jewish experience. They were Gentiles living like pagans. It's just like us in the time with, with and some of some people in some generations, it's starting to freeze generation. They don't really know nothing about Martin Luther King other than we got a holiday. And how many of you do about Juneteenth before now? That that was the day. But now, you know, because they made a national holiday. But you barely knew when the day you, the slavery was done. You, you, don't, you think you'll start guessing. Because we didn't live in that era. But it affected us. Same thing with these Gentiles. Some of them didn't know. So think about this. Here comes Paul with this gospel of grace. There's a God that loves you. Died for your sins. And you believe by that faith. God has opened up your eyes. And Paul has done miracles in front of them. To verify who he is. He leaves, and then all of a sudden, here they come like roaches. Hey, Paul was right, but you know what? He didn't give it all to you. You need to do something. But what do I need to do? If you if you a Jew, Paul a Jew, so y'all got to be. And he probably told them some stories about the old days. Well, then if you were Jew, because Jews dressed differently from the pagans, so they knew they were Jews. They dressed differently. Church folk, we dress differently. Pastors, we wear collars. So you come, somebody walk in here with a collar on, you automatically assume that they are a damn minister. But they can, you can go buy that stuff. <laughs> okay? So so they come in and they come to them, these, these, this beautiful group of Gentile believers who believe by faith of the hearing of the gospel. And here you come, which you got to do something. And of course, again, you a Jew, he a Jew. What we need to do? Oh. Do we need to eat something different? Nah. Do we need to worship on the Sabbath day? Nah, you can. What do we need to do? Well, all the males need to be circumcised. What do you mean? All of y'all need to have the foreskin of your penis cut off to be good with God because that's the badge God gave us to recognize us way back in, in, in Abraham's day. OK, the covenant with Abraham was one of the covenants was circumcision. Circumcision was a sign. So don't you want the sign? Of course, I want the sign. But the minute that you do the sign, you leave the gospel of grace. See, anytime you go to the works of a thing, you leave the gospel. Anytime you say I need to do something else to deserve the salvation God gives me, you've lost the gospel at that point. And anybody comes in and tries to give that to you is deceiving you, whether in error or in ignorance or on purpose. It's hard for us to believe we're saved by grace. Because we want to do something to be a part of our own salvation. But if we could save ourselves, we wouldn't need Jesus. What would you need Jesus for? And if it was just about tweaking you, you're a relatively good person and you just need some tweaking. Then what you need a savior for? You need a mechanic. See, these are the things that have to go through your mind when people come bring these things to you. It's in the scripture, but again, everything is not written to you. 
It said the, the, the scriptures were our school master. All things written both before time for our learning. What are we supposed to learn from the New Testament? That the law kills and that no one can fulfill the law and the law is holy and that's the standard of God and unless somebody else does it for us we can't, we can't get there. So God loved us enough to send Jesus. See the purpose for the law was to use the Israelites as the example of ones trying to keep the law which we saw in Judges and throughout the New Old Testament they never could. That's why you have in Judges everyone does what is right in his own eyes. That's why before Judges and Joshua, Joshua had this last speech was, as far as me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. That's one house out of 12 houses. And everybody went on way to their own country, to their own land, and they did what was right. Now we had the time of the judges. We even had a time of the kings. Did all the kings do what was right? No. David messed it up. By the time we get to Solomon, after Solomon, the kingdom splits into north and south. Failure. Following the pagan nations. He told them, don't marry into the pagan nations because you're not going to change them. They're going to change you. And that's what it did. They changed them. So you had a mixture like a mulligan stew of Judaism and paganism. And then by the time we get into some part of here, we get, they up here burning their children, offering their children up for sacrifice to these unknown, unholy gods. Jews. God's chosen people. Can't keep the law because we do prefer darkness. The law is simply put there that says you can't and it condemns and it kills because the breaking of the law brings death. So he's, think about it. They've been set free from their paganism and brought right into Judaism which will kill them completely. But Paul set them free with the gospel. So let's start at verse 14. Let's start at verse 14. Because I think that's where I left off at last time, but I might have finished. But we're going to take our time. We're not in a rush. Uh, free to go ahead and start at, start, at start at 1. Forget it. Start at 1. Chapter 2, chapter 2, verse 1. Coming from the NASB. This is Peter's confrontation with uh, uh, Paul's confrontation with Peter. Go ahead. Then after an interval of 14 years, I went up again to Jerusalem mm -hmm. with, with Barnabas, taking Titus along also. Titus is a Greek. Titus is a Gentile. OK, he's setting Titus up. That's kind of kind of kind of crazy to me because Titus don't know what he's being set up for. Maybe he did. Maybe he didn't. But if they would if they convinced him to, he had to get circumcised. You know, why can you argue your point without that? But you need sometimes you need a you need an actual circumstance. That shows what the consequences are right then and there to get people to see it. Okay, go ahead. It was because of a revelation that I went up and I submitted to them the gospel which I preach among the Gentiles. Stop. Why did he go up? Why did he go up? What did he say? Because of a what? Revelation. revelation. Who's the revelation from? From God, from Jesus. From the Holy Spirit. He had a revelation from the Holy Spirit to go. See, I like Paul. Paul, 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 you don't understand. Paul's walking back into danger. But his revelation is more important that he gets from God than anything that he can face. We can grow into that, that the revelations in the scripture is that God's word is true. Everybody else is a liar. If God says this is that, and that is this, then that's what it is. It makes no difference what I think or how I feel about it. I need to line my feelings up with what God says, even when I don't understand it or just accept it and be obedient to what God says until the revelation brings about me understanding. OK, God, God says, by all means, get understanding. But first thing you got to do, sacrifice what you think for what he says, because he said, I'd rather have obedience to what I want, obedience to his word rather than a physical sacrifice, you know, going into your closet, lighting candles. He don't care nothing about that. He can give you illumination. You don't need to see that's the sense of works thing. You don't need to go nowhere, do nothing to get gumulation. He said, if you want wisdom, what did he tell you to do? Ask. He didn't say, what he, mother, he said, go in your closet, spin around twice, and throw some, some dust up in the air and you can get some wisdom. No, he said, ask. You don't really realize how much power you got. Remember in Colossians 2 and 9, all the fullness of the Godhead dwells in Jesus, and you are filled with that, so you don't need to do anything but go ask. You have a direct connection to God. You don't need to go to nobody else. 
But you need to understand that you can go. Okay, go ahead. But I did so in private to those who were of reputation for fear that I might be running or had run in vain. So he was, he said, look, fear. I had trepidation. He obeyed. Now watch this. He obeyed, but he had trepidation, meaning that he had doubt. He had doubt, but he obeyed. See, the reason how you overcome doubt, be obedient to what you have doubted if you know it's God or you believe it's God. If it's wrong, you did it by faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. And if it's wrong, he'll correct you. He's not going to whoop you for that. That's not a chastisement thing. That's a redirecting thing. Okay? Go ahead. So Paul got this revelation. He had trepidation. Go ahead. But not even Titus, who was with me, though he was a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. So, they, so he's saying, man, this was a good trip. He said, in discussions with everybody, guess what? Titus was not compelled, even though he was a Gentile Greek, to be circumcised. This is new. This is this is exciting. This is what Paul wanted. Because they weren't supposed to even meet with Titus. He couldn't even be in the same room with them if he wasn't a Jew. You got to remember, Jews thought Gentiles were dirty. So they couldn't even be in the same room. And he probably just like a Gentile. So they knew he was a Gentile when Paul walked up with him. But Barnabas wasn't a Gentile, and neither was Paul. Okay? So, so here we go. Go ahead. But it was because of the false brethren secretly brought in who had sneaked in to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus. They always want to spy out your liberty, that your freedom in Christ Jesus. Go ahead. The false brethren. Go ahead. In order to bring us into bondage. To bring you where? Into bondage. False doctrine, false teaching, false, false brothers who are not really brothers at all, but wolves in sheep's clothing are always trying to bring you into bondage to something, some person, some thought. And normally it's themselves. They're not trying to lead you to Christ. They're trying to take you away from Christ and put you under their thumb. Okay, go ahead. But we did not yield in subjection to them for even an hour. Paul said I, he fought a good fight of faith. He said, I'm not even going for that. Okay, he's saying that when they when I when I recognize them, I don't even give them entertain their thoughts. I don't yield to them for even an hour, meaning that I don't even give them a, a voice. They can talk it, but I'm ignoring them or I am kicking them out. Go ahead. So that the truth of the gospel would remain with you. So this is about a war for the gospel. See, this is about war for the gospel. It's being played out in real life for Paul, but just like your life. You, once you become a saint, saint to God, you are now in the army of God. You got to put on your full armor and realize your battle is with the people, not the, per, not the person in their flesh, but the, the flesh that's governing them to destroy the gospel that's in you. Okay? They can't. They shouldn't be able to. But realize that's their job. That's their job. Sinner's job is to come to the people of God and convince them that they're not under God anymore. That their circumstances dictate, that their feelings dictate to them their position with God. I don't know why people think that Christians are supposed to be happy and smiling all the time. I don't know where they get that from. When the Bible clearly tells us once we come to Christ, we're going to be in a war. They don't tell that to the heathens. Because you ain't in a war. Satan, you Satan's your daddy. He cool with you. But when we come to Christ, we begin to battle the principalities and the powers and the rulers in high places that control thoughts, minds, and actions and deeds. Okay? Our war is not against people. Our war is against ideas. Okay? Philosophies, cultures. What's new today? The Galatians' problem was you had these Judaizers coming in bringing in what was already dead. Okay? Go ahead. Verse 6. But from those who were of high reputation, what they were makes no difference to me. God shows no partiality. Well, those who were of reputation contributed nothing to me. Mm -hmm. But on the contrary, seeing that I had been entrusted with the gospel to the uncircumcised, just as Peter had been to the circumcised. So circumcised is to the Jews, uncircumcised to the Gentiles. Go ahead. 
For he who effectually worked for Peter in his apostleship to the circumcised effectually worked for me also to the Gentiles. So he's saying, look, the same God that's in Peter, the same Jesus that picked him, picked me too. And it's working. And I have the proof by the sign gifts of the apostles. Go ahead. And recognizing the grace that had been given to me, James and Cephas and John, who were reputed to be pillars, gave to me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship. That was the seal that they accepted what he said. They recognized the grace that was given to him and gave him the right hand of fellowship. Now, when he went the first time, they were hiding from him. When he came back with Barnabas, they accepted him because they finally listened to him. And they realized the same God that picked them, the same experience that they had personally with Jesus, saw the resurrected Jesus, blah, 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 Paul had. And that the, that, that the gospel that was given is the same. But his mission, his, his mission is to the Gentiles and the Jews. Peter's mission is to the Jews and the Gentiles. So they gave him right hand of fellowship and they accepted him. And you remember Titus in the background wondering if he's going to get cut on. But he's not. Okay, there's not going to be a requirement. So they're making a ruling. This is called the Council of Jerusalem. They're making a ruling on how he should proceed. Go ahead. So that we might go to the Gentiles and <coughs> they to the circumcised. We're going to split. You do your thing. I do my thing. We're going we're gonna to be we're going to tell people about the goodness of God. at least in the repentance. Romans two and four. Go ahead. They only ask us to remember the poor. The very thing I also was eager to do. OK. But when Cephas came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face because he stood condemned. Think about this. Antioch was a was an outpost, Roman outpost. It was a mainly Gentile Roman outpost. There were some Jews there, but now we have a confrontation. Now, you just told me I could go. You recognize the grace in me, and now we're going to have a problem. You come to visit me, and now we see the problem. We see the setup for the problem, okay? We're we going to see what happens when people get around people who they're trying to impress. If God shows no partiality, don't you spend no time to impress nobody, especially in the body of Christ. We are all equal, Okay? We are all equal in Christ Jesus. Different assignments, but all equal. But when you start trying to impress each other in a way that makes one person feel better than another person, then there's a problem. Okay, go ahead. For prior to the coming of certain men from James, he used to eat with the Gentiles. Go ahead. But when they came, he began to withdraw and hold himself aloof, fearing the party of the circumcision. Now think about this. They have their meals together. They have the love offering. They do communion together. And now he had come to visit. He over there eating pig ears and snoots and barbecue, pork. It's good too. Pass me a piece of that ham. It's good. Here come James and John. And here they come. And they say, or from the party of James and John. Now, now this is this is where you got to read this in. It what read that again. Who was it? But when Cephas came to Antioch, mm -hmm. I opposed him to his face because he stood condemned. Mm -hmm. For prior to the coming of certain men from James, he used to eat with the Gentiles. Okay, see, certain men from James. So James wasn't in his crowd. But these were men claiming to be from James. You know in the Bible it says, Some say I'm from Apollos, some say I'm from Cephas, some say I'm from Christ. See just because you say you walk in truth don't mean you walk in truth. Anybody can walk out here and claim to be walking truth. You follow what I'm saying? But you got to look at what they teach. So these men claim to be from James and John, but didn't James just give him the right hand of fellowship? Mm -hmm. So something's wrong with this equation. But they don't have cell phones like we have. We can check. They just hope that they tell the truth. They weren't telling the truth because James would never do that. He just he just they just ruled on this. Now Peter's being now Peter's there. James is not there, so James is not going to send somebody to do this. These are more Judaizers coming in, and they're claiming they from James because James was the leader of the Jerusalem church. So I come in the name of James. We're going to pay attention to you because we, hey, James is the leader of the Jerusalem church. Okay, so here they come. Paul's been sitting there for however long. He stayed there like a while. Man, he's sitting there eating snooty, eating piggers, eating all kind of stuff, and it's good. But here they come. Go ahead. But when they came, he began to withdraw and hold himself aloof, 
fearing the party of the circumcision. So now look at it. Here they come. And now they begin, as we would say, what? To act funny. You get up from the table of the Gentile brothers and sisters in Christ and go over to the, the Jewish table, which actually says what they do is wrong. So these impressionable people that were that were being attacked by the Judaizers, here come some more Judaizers, not with circumcision, but with, with this thing of you ain't supposed to be eating those things. Peter says, you know what? You're right. Let me go over here. But what does that do? What that does is automatically tell these people that they still haven't received salvation. So you went from the physical thing to a dietary thing, still trying to get them to still try to convince them that they weren't saved by grace, that they need to do something. And when Peter was over there, Peter got nervous because he feared them. What does he fear? His reputation, because he was the apostle of apostles, but he fears a reputation. Peter's still messing up. Peter's still messing up. And normally when you follow somebody who's messing up, he always got somebody else. Read on. Who else thought? Who else? Who else failed in this test? The rest of the Jews joined him in hypocrisy. The rest of the Jews. So whoever's at that pig eating, pig eating table left the table, left the Gentile brothers, and went over to their table. And probably the table's in a whole nother room because remember they ain't supposed to eat with Gentiles. So imagine we up here celebrating a meal. All of a sudden somebody walk in and be like, uh, 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 uh. We'll have our meal in the basement, our kosher meal in the basement. How's it gonna make us feel? And we knew believers. We thought you loved us. That's why having a meal with people is an intimate thing. But when you did that, you're really telling us there's still something wrong with us. We're still dirty. Okay, go ahead. With the result that even Barnabas was carried away by their hypocrisy. That's why Paul went at them because even though his boy Barnabas, who knew better, wanted to please them and show partiality. Did we just read God shows no partiality? And neither should we. And sometimes it's by our actions that we show partiality. Not by, by our words. It's by our actions. So Paul, so dude, Peter gets up and Barnabas looks around and says, hey Paul, I'll be right back. <laughs> I'll be right back. And Paul runs down in the basement. Peter, I mean, Barnabas runs down in the basement. And Paul looking, where, where, where's everybody at? Oh, they went. Can you imagine being a, uh, a Galatian? Well, they went downstairs. What did they go downstairs for? Um, they won't eat with us. Paul like the devil. Paul like the devil is a lie. Paul said the devil is a lie. I'm going to go deal with Peter because Peter is the one who started this. Okay. So his confrontation to Peter, see, Paul ain't scared of Peter's apostleship because he's an apostle too. So he's going to confront Peter because what's being challenged now is the gospel again itself. Is it law or is it grace? Have we been delivered from the dietary law of the Jews or are we, or as Gentiles, we're supposed to be made Jews? Okay, that's what we're about. That's the argument really is. Is it the gospel of grace or is it the gospel of law, which is no gospel at all? And Paul said, if anybody teach you any other gospel, even an angel himself, let them be accursed. Right now, that's what Paul is telling. Peter stood accursed and condemned because he didn't act like a brother in Christ Jesus. Okay? All right? Go ahead. But when I saw that they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel. Walking the path, walking the straight and narrow, walking in the light. Go ahead. I said to Cephas in the presence of all, if you, being a Jew, live like the Gentiles and not like the Jews, how is it that you compel the Gentiles to live like Jews? So he's, this is what he's saying. He's saying, if you over here at the pork table and don't compel them to come over, why would you compel them if you was over here to come over there and live like you weren't living anyway? You a hypocrite. You hypocrite. How are you going to compel people to come to Christ when you're living like a full heathen? That's why, again, I always say it's a twofold thing. What you do and what you say have to match up. It can't be one and the other. You can't call, I'm a work in progress, and you could about to commit sin on purpose. You can't live like that. But see, the interesting part about this is in Acts 10. Peter had already had experience with God had told him about this thing with the Gentiles and the dietary things. See, Pete, see, we are Acts 15, 
But there's Acts 10 before Acts 15. So he'd already had experience. Let's go to Acts 10. The situation with Cornelius. Cornelius was a Gentile. Go to Acts 10. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead, start reading. Verse 1. Now there was a man at Caesarea named Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian cohort, a devout man and one who feared God with all his household. He was a God fearer, but he was not a Jew. All throughout the, the, the Old Testament, we had these God fearing people like Rahab. OK, they weren't Jews. They were Gentiles, but they were God fearers. That's what they called them. God fearers. They they sacrificed to God, but they were not allowed in the temple of God. OK, go ahead. And gave many alms to the Jewish people and prayed to God continually. So he gave to the poor and he prayed to God. Simple worship. Go ahead. About the ninth hour of the day, he clearly saw in a vision an angel of God who had just come in and said to him, Cornelius, and fixing his gaze on him and being much alarmed, he said, what is it, Lord? And he said to him, your prayers and alms have ascended as a memorial before God. Now dispatch some men to Joppa and send for a man named Simon, who is also called Peter. He is staying with the tanner named Simon, whose house is by the sea. When the angel who was speaking to him had left, he summoned two of his servants and a devout soldier of those who were his personal attendants. And after he had explained everything to them, he sent them to Joppa. He sent the police to get him. He sent, he sent some soldiers to go get him. He was a soldier. He, he, being a centurion, he was the boss. He was like a general. So he going to send and Peter going to come one way or the other. But he's going to give Peter a chance once he explains to him. But So can you imagine Peter's on the run from the Gentile, from the from the Romans and from the Jews. So he's hiding. OK, so God visits this Cornelius, this devout man and says, go get Peter. I want, I, I, I want you to meet Peter. OK, he cool because he loves the Jews. But we're going to see how Peter go at. Go ahead. On the next day, as they were on their way and approaching the city, Peter went up on the housetop about the sixth hour to pray. Mm -hmm. But he became hungry and was desiring to eat. So Peter was fasting. He need, he hungry now. Go ahead. But while they were making preparations, he fell into a trance. And he saw the sky opened up and an object like a great sheet coming down, lowered by four corners to the ground. And there were in it all kinds of four-footed animals and crawling creatures of the earth and birds of the air. A voice came to him, get up, Peter, kill and eat. So there was a pig in there. Go ahead. <laughs> but Peter said, by no means, Lord, for I have never eaten anything unholy and unclean. I have never eaten anything unholy. I've never ate a, I've never ate a snoop sandwich in my entire life. I've never had any barbecue. I never had any ham. I never had any bacon. I've never eaten what is not clean per the law. Okay, that's what he's telling them. Now think about this, Peter, with the foot-sized mouth. He tells the Lord what he ain't gonna do. Okay, Peter still messing. Up. It's amazing the love of God that he had for Peter. Peter still ain't got it all together yet. Okay, Lord. No, never. This must be a test from the devil. No, never have I ever eaten. No, 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 no. Okay, go ahead. Again, a voice came to him a second time. What God has cleansed no longer consider unholy. Now, the fact that the Lord came into the first time and Peter said, no, the Lord could have killed him right then and there. Because that's the Lord talking. That's your creator talking. But creator loves you so much. He understands our frailties. That's what I'm saying. When, he, when we are weak, he is strong. So we come put Peter a second time. And what did he do second time? Read that again. Again, a voice came to him a second time. What God has cleansed no longer consider unholy. Now he's telling them, look, kill and eat. Now you, you, you need to have some clarification. What God has cleansed, don't you what? No longer consider unholy. No longer consider it unholy. I've just cleared the way. Okay, go ahead. This happened three times. Three times. Now think about it. Peter said no even after that time. Rebellious. But God is gracious and, 
and, and patient. See, the fruit of the Spirit comes from the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit guides us. And so we expect Jesus to have this patience because he gave it to us in the, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, self-control. Yeah, he exhibits that to us every day. Lord is so patient with us. I, I couldn't be, I would never be as patient with you as he is with you. Ain't no way. But because he is patient with you and I know he's patient with me, then that, that motivates me to be patient with you. All right. And that should motivate you to be patient with other people that you don't understand or you don't know why or all that stuff we go through our mind. Go ahead. And immediately the object was taken up into the sky. Mm -hmm. Now, while Peter was greatly perplexed in mind as to what the vision which he had seen might be. Behold, the men who had been sent by Cornelius, having asked directions for Simon's house, appeared at the gate. Now imagine, here, choom, 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 choom. here they come, Roman soldiers now, dressed in Roman garb. They come to the gate. Who you looking for? Simon Peter. And the guy like, you better go. Yeah, we don't want them, you know, because they got authority. They still under Roman rule. Okay? So this ain't no thing where you're going to sit back and go, oh, you can't come in. They coming in. Okay? You, you're not going to oppose Roman rule. God is using authority because Peter would needs authority. Peter, Peter works better with authority figures. That's interesting about Peter. Only person Peter paid attention to was Jesus. And half the time he got that wrong because think about it, he's perplexed. He, he'd have had a message from God three times and he's still perplexed mm -hmm. because he 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 is regard, he's thinking his Judaism is still there. See, they still ain't got it. That gives you some hope. They still ain't, this is Peter still thinking about Judaism. OK, go ahead. And calling out, they were asking whether Simon, who was also called Peter, was staying there. While Peter was reflecting on the vision, the spirit said to him, Behold, three men are looking for you. But get up, go downstairs, and accompany them without misgivings, for I have sent them myself. Peter went down to the men and said, Behold, I am the one you are looking for. What is the reason for which you have come? So Peter said, So the Holy Spirit told Peter, Get up, I sent these men. Because people scared. He's perplexed about the vision and saw them as like, oh, what is really going on here? Okay? So he, the Holy Spirit said, go on down there because I sent them. And they'll let you know what the deal is. So Peter said, okay, what's the, hold up. Peter, instead of Peter trusting the Holy Spirit, he going to ask, what y'all want with me? Go ahead. They said, Cornelius, a centurion, a righteous and God-fearing man, well spoken of by the entire nation of the Jews, was divinely directed by the, by a holy angel to send for you to come to his house and hear a message from you. So he invited them in and gave them lodging. On the next day, he got up and went away with them, and some of the brethren from Joppa accompanied him. On the following day, he entered Caesarea, where Caesarea, Caesarea where Cornelius was waiting for them and had called together his relatives and close friends. So Cornelius is going to throw him a banquet and because God had told him who was coming and he was happy to see him. Okay? Happy to see him. Because God said, I got something for you because you've been so devout. Go ahead. When Peter entered, Cornelius met him. What did Peter do? Enter. Jews don't go into to, 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 to Gentile houses. Now, this is before 15, and this is before what we read in uh, Galatians. So Peter didn't have this experience, so he goes into the house, okay? Now, think about it. He's in this man's house. He's a Roman soldier. He's a general. Think, guess about what he's going to eat. What did God tell him to eat? He said, eat. You can eat whatever, okay? What the Bible says, what you eat or drink don't commend you to God. That's in the scriptures. <coughs> Go ahead. When Peter entered... Cornelius met him and fell at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter raised him up saying, stand up. I too am just a man. See? Now Peter's saying something that's good. I too am just a man. Show no partiality. We're just men and women. Go ahead. As he talked with him, he entered and found many people assembled. And he said to them, 
You yourselves know how unlawful it is for a man who is a Jew to associate with a foreigner or to visit him. So y'all know that I ain't supposed to be here by the law. Okay, go ahead. And yet God has shown me that I should not call any man unholy or unclean. Stop. You need to highlight that. God showed Peter that I should not call any man unholy or unclean based upon the Jewish law. The law's dead. The newness of light has come. Paul, Peter gets a revelation based upon his revelation. God had to give him the experience. I'm going to send you to a pork eating house. Okay. And, and now the, the full revelation come. I should not call unclean or holy what God has called clean. He's getting it now. All right. This is before Galatia. Now, he, did, he didn't have the experience. Go ahead. That is why I came without even raising any objection when I was sent for. So I ask for what reason you have sent for me. Cornelius said, four days ago to this hour, I was praying in my home during the ninth hour. And behold, a man stood before me in shining garments. And he said, Cornelius. Your prayer has been heard and your alms have been remembered before God. Therefore, send to Joppa and invite Simon, who is also called Peter, to come to you. He is staying at the house of Simon, the tanner, by the sea. Stop right there. The key to that is whatever, what, 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 what Cornelius was praying for as a Gentile was to have a better relationship with God and that his sins would be forgiven. That's what he was praying for. He understood that he was a sinning man, even though he had power and authority. But there was one thing he lacked, like the rich young ruler. But where the rich young ruler failed, Cornelius succeeded. He humbled himself. Okay? He humbled himself. Go ahead. So I sent for you immediately, and you have been kind enough to come. Now then... We are all here present before God to hear all that you have been commanded by the Lord. Okay, he said, okay, Peter, I know you're here to give me something that I ain't never had before. Give it to me. We are all, not just, not just me. I brought my whole family in because this is going to be good for everybody. The gospel is good for everybody. Go ahead. Opening his mouth, Peter said, I most certainly understand now that God is not one to show partiality. Oh, you think? <laughs> he understands when? Now. So what happened then? You got to remember, this is before Galatia. So what happened? Well, this lets you know. If you don't stay focused on what God has done and what God has said, your flesh is still had the ability to show partiality and to go back to what is dead and done with. And you trying to impress somebody. So this happened to Peter. So it can happen to us. These things are put in the Bible to let you know you have to stay focused. God engaged the experience of what was right. And you let time go by. You mess around and be confronted with that thing that you've been delivered from and you go right back to it. Peter got delivered from this. This is the, this is his delivery. I understand that. He said now. Well, your now should carry on to later. It shouldn't just be a flash in the pan moment. Go ahead. But in every nation, the man who fears him and does what is right is welcome to him. In every nation. That means even beyond the Jewish nation. Peter's preaching the gospel. Peter, Peter's preaching the truth. In every nation that fears God, God has welcomed them. That's why he was able to come to God as a believer in God and not be a Jew. The Jews are favored to bring people to God, but God didn't, didn't look at the other nations as, as evil. He looked at the other nations as corrupted and needing the light of the Jews, but the Jews became corrupted through their corruption. They were supposed to be the light. We the light. We don't want to fall into that category. We're corrupting people and we the church. We're more important. We're the body of Christ. We're not external. We're internal. Okay, go ahead. The word which he sent to the sons of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. 
you yourselves know the thing which took place throughout all Judea, starting from Galilee, after the baptism which John proclaimed. You know of Jesus of Nazareth, how God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power, and how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all the things he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They also put him to death by hanging him on a cross. God raised him up on the third day and granted that he become visible, not to all the people, but to witnesses who were chosen beforehand by God, that is, to us who ate and drank with him after he arose from the dead. And he ordered us to preach to his preach to the people and solemnly to testify that this is the one who has been appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. Of him, all the prophets bear witness that through his name, everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sin. Everyone who believes receives the forgiveness of sin. He went historically through how he got to the point, but the bottom line, everyone who believes receives forgiveness of sin. Away from works, okay? Believes. That's the whole book of John is about believing. Okay? Go ahead. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who were listening to the Jesus. Message. Yes. All the circumcised believers who came with Peter were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. For they were hearing them speaking with tongues and exalting God. Then Peter answered, Surely no one can refuse the water for these to be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we did, can he? So now Peter's going all the way back to Pentecost. So you have to go back to the Pentecost, which I'm not going to read. You go back to the Pentecost experience and it's the same experience. Not jibber jabber. Not I bought a car in a Honda. Not that. But everybody understood each other's languages, meaning that they were all speaking a language that was understood that they never spoke before by the people who could understand it. So what was given at Pentecost were languages of understanding that they never spoke before. And the people that didn't speak that language understood it because you got to remember there was a congregation of Jews celebrating Pentecost. And you have to remember the Jews were scattered all over the world for hundreds of years. So you, you had Jews in different parts of the Gentile world and they spoke that language. Okay. The Jews in Jerusalem spoke Hebrew, but the Jews from Parthenia, it gives you about 13 different sections. They had their own language, their own dialect. Even the, even we knew that, 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 that uh, the disciples where they were from in Galilee, Remember when Peter and them were, were, were when Jesus about to get, get executed, when Jesus about to get crucified, and that little girl said, I know you from Galilee because the way you talk. Just like St. Louis, we got a funny thing with Ur. Okay, where we go, people, Ur, Ur where we go. See, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But that's, that's yeah. our dialect. Okay, but they understood each other. So the, Peter had a, 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 a recent witness to verify what has been done through the preaching of the gospel, the grace of God, believing in Jesus, and in the middle of what he's preaching, the Holy Spirit fell on the people. See, that's why the problem with the church, we preaching everything else but the gospel, and there's no power of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit comes through the gospel. <laughs> Didn't we just read that the gospel is able to save us from the present day of evil? Yes, we read that in Galatians. So, yeah, you preach it in different styles and different forms, but it has to be given at some point during a message about what we have in Christ Jesus through what he did on the cross. You can never wear it out. But when we preaching everything else, going around the corner, making everybody laugh, having a good time. We miss out on the fact that that don't have no power. That don't have no power. Y'all, have, no, I ain't gonna tell y'all that. Nope, 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 nope. Cause then y'all, y'all be no, no. Go ahead. Next, read. Verse forty-eight. And he ordered them to be baptized in the name of <coughs> Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to stay on for a few days. Stop right there. So he asked them be baptized in the name of Jesus, and he stayed on a few days. 
Another Gentile believer. Let's go back to Galatians so we can get finished chapter two. Go to uh, go to uh, right quick free to go to uh, Matthew six and one. Read that. We're gonna read some sidebar scriptures that prove what we got. Six and one, and then seven one through five. Six and one. Six one. Beware of practicing your righteousness before men to be noticed by them. Otherwise, you have no reward with your father who is in heaven. So in other words, what Peter did was he wanted to practice his righteousness before his brothers that showed up. And, and God is saying, you ain't got no. Now, Peter and them heard this. Now, this is Jesus talking to them back then saying, don't practice your righteousness before men because you're trying to please men. If God shows no partiality, don't do it to please them. Do it to please me. But don't practice your righteousness. Don't don't be so pious. Don't have a certain way you talk here and a different way you talk out there. Be the same. Be steady. Be honest. OK. Go ahead, seven, seven one through five. five. Do not judge, so that you will not be judged. For in the way you judge, you will be judged. And by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you. Mm -hmm. Why do you look at the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? See, we spend too much time trying to... See, this is what Peter did. When, that, when them sheets came down and all that stuff, he was judging... Their unholiness based upon a law that his whole nation couldn't keep. So he hadn't really yet removed the speck from his eye, the law from his eye of the law, to look at the speck of just a dietary thing keeps you from being with God? Really? You see what I'm saying? So sometimes it's our legalism that's the big log in our eye that gets us to look at other people and judge other people. That's what that really means. It means that, look, what's preventing you from looking at them in a way that God looks at them? What is it? Your money, your education. It could be anything. Dark skin, light skin, white, black, educated, uneducated. What is it that you judge them by that they can't have what you have, which is salvation? If he's no respect to person, he's no respect to position either. Okay? Go to Second uh, Second Corinthians 3 and 6. Read that. Uh huh. Is in the middle of a sentence. Okay, start before that. Okay, five. Not that we are adequate in ourselves to consider anything as coming from ourselves, but our adequacy is from God, who has also made us adequate as servants of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. So, how did they receive? Through the gospel, the power of the Holy Spirit. The law killed, the letter set him free. That's what Jesus was trying to tell Peter. Get away from the law. Get into the spirit. The law killed you. You couldn't do it. Judea, he just gave the gospel and it showed. Now you have the spirit. The Galatians have the spirit, but the Judaizers keep trying to take them back to what will kill them. Okay? Still trying to take them back. Uh, go to Romans 3 and 23. Mm -hmm. For is awesome. Go ahead. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified as a gift by His grace through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus, whom God displayed publicly as a propitiation in His blood through faith. So, in other words, Jesus was our substitute. Everybody received it by grace. Then Paul, uh, Peter, just talked about the grace. Paul is talking about the grace in Galatians, okay? Let's run back to Galatians so we can finish up chapter 2. Go ahead, finish up chapter 2. Go back to Galatians and finish up chapter 2. Okay, we are on verse 15. I'm sorry, 14? No, we're on 15. 15, man, we just getting to where I wanted to start at. Go ahead, go ahead. We are Jews by nature and not sinners from among the Gentiles. Nevertheless, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law... But through faith in Christ Jesus, even we have believed in Christ Jesus so that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. We just read that in Romans. We just read that. And we, you're not justified by faith. Now, he's 
He's confronting Peter with this. He's, te I think he's telling Peter, who's supposed to know this, who we saw experience this with the with uh, with uh, uh, Cornelius. He just experienced this with Cornelius, and now he got to be told again. That's why you got to keep telling people. You can't stop, even with the apostles. Peter, hey, Peter forgot, you know, or whatever. But he was more worried about what? The fear of the circumcision, the Jews, the Judaizers, the ones that's coming to destroy the liberty that lied and said they were from James. No, they went from James. They just grabbed it because they knew that there was no way in the moment to verify that. Okay, go ahead. Since by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified. By the works of the law, no flesh will be justified. So by the works of the law or any other works, Will no flesh be justified? Go ahead. But if, while seeking to be justified in Christ, we ourselves have also been found sinners, is Christ then a minister of sin? All of sin is fall short of the glory of God. Go ahead. May it never be. For if I rebuild what I have once destroyed, I prove myself to be a transgressor. So in other words, if I go back to what has been, 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 been demolished, then I proved to be a transgressor because what led me, what, what, what I was, I'm not anymore. So if I rebuild the old man while the new man is in me, then I proved to be a transgressor still. You can't go backwards. You got to go forwards. Faith is a forward thing, not a backward thing. Okay? Faith motivates you to go forward. The faith in believing in what Jesus did backwards motivates you to go forward. But you don't never stay stuck. If you stuck, you standing still. And if you're standing still, you're not growing. OK, so Jesus has given us an opportunity to grow. We don't have to go back to the law. Not none of them. None of them. Except for one. Love your neighbor as yourself. Have no God before any other God. Me. That's all you got. To do. Those two will govern your whole entire life. Go ahead. For through the law, I died to the law. So through the law, he died to the law. The law brings death. Because the law says if you miss one of them, you missed all of them, and the law condemns you to death. All right? So that's what Paul is talking about. And he should know what he's talking about because he was a Pharisee. So he understands the law. Go ahead. So that I might live to God. So you had to, he had to die to the law so that he might live through the grace and faith in Jesus to Christ. Go ahead. I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live. But Christ lives in me. So it's no longer you that live. It's Christ living out the Christian life through you. You can't live out the Christian life. You have to submit to God. Let him live it through you. You can't crucify yourself. You got to let the Holy Spirit crucify you. You can't crucify yourself. The reason why you can't crucify yourself, because if you nail this arm up, who's going to nail this one up? You can't crucify yourself. It is a submission thing. That's how we crucify ourselves daily. We submit to the one who's been crucified. Substitution, vicarious death, burial and resurrection. We become who he was because he, that's, that's the means by which we get saved. We, we identify with that. Okay? We identify with the crucifixion. Go ahead. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. Who loved me and gave himself up for me. So we live by faith. Any works that we do, we do it by faith in, in because we love God, who we understand who gave himself up for us. See, the key to this is, the key to really living the Christian life is submitting to the Holy Spirit and the word of God by faith and allowing it to blossom like a flower through your life. Because you understand he died for you. No greater love than this, that one man should die, give his life for his friends. He gave his life so that you had this abundant life. And it starts here. It starts now. You don't have to wait to go get it by and by. You can have it right here on this earth because you his ambassadors. If you ever been to an embassy, the embassy be laid out. It don't care what it could be in the most desolate country. <laughs> but where the American embassy is, they got cable TV. They got soda. They got steaks and they could be in a country don't have nothing. But where you plant the embassy, you, you're representing the, the richness of where you came from. We're representing the richness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who died for us and gave us eternal life without the law. OK, so he's he's, he's rebuking him. Remember, this is a rebuke that he's giving Peter now. All right. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Go ahead. I do not nullify the grace of God. 
For if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died needlessly. So yeah, if we could be righteous through obeying the law, then there was no need for Jesus to come. If we could be tweaked by the law and, and love God through the law, then there would be no reason for Jesus. Okay, go ahead. Chapter three. Chapter three, good. We'll stop right there. Amen. We'll stop right there and we will begin chapter three. So he's done checking Peter and now he got to go to the Galatians. So they're watching him check Peter and now think about this. They figure, oh yeah, get him Paul. But Paul got to turn to them and say, okay, what about you? You know, go ahead and read ahead. Thank everybody for tuning in. Uh, we'll be in chapter three in Galatians. Let's pray. Oh, grace, Heavenly Father, I just thank you. I thank you for your word. Continue to show us how we are to live by and through the gospel that saves souls and guides us and keeps us from the present day evil. Lord, bless every member of God's kingdom who calls upon the name of Lord Jesus Christ as their savior and especially bless the household of faith and those are members and disciples of walking truth. It's in Jesus name I pray. Amen. Thank you for listening. We worship at the Universal Church of Jesus Christ building, located at 2301 Wallace Avenue Overland, Missouri 63114. Times of worship, 8.30 on Sunday, Bible study 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. on Tuesday. All are welcome and thank you for considering us as your place of worship. Thank you for listening to the Walk in Truth Radio Network broadcast. If this message has been a blessing to you consider donating on your favorite platform. You can donate by looking in the description box and picking your favorite platform of choice, Venmo, Cash App or PayPal. Continue listening. And your prayers are needed, welcomed and appreciated.